Come on, let's do this, man. Let's go, come on. All right. Hello. Right up front, I have to apologize for this being uh, not much more than a talking head video. Um, this video is primarily an informational video that is designed to arm you with knowledge that I feel is important to know when choosing a new graphics card for your computer and want to get the most bang for your buck. A question I get asked fairly frequently and that I know has also been asked of many of the tech YouTubers that I enjoy watching uh, by first time PC builders and upgraders is, should I get blah, blah, blah graphics card? Uh, the problem with that question is there are some other key pieces of information one should be including with this question in order for myself or someone else to offer an appropriate recommendation. In this video, I want to share with you what those other important bits of information are and how that info can help you choose the right card for you and keep you from spending a bunch of money on a card with more horsepower than you really need or will ever use. In my opinion, when buying a graphics card, the first two questions to ask yourself is what is the resolution and refresh rate of the monitor I'm going to be playing on. I'm sure most of you watching this video understand what screen resolution is, but for those that may not, the resolution of your monitor is the number of pixels on your screen and is most commonly expressed in the number of pixels on the display in the vertical axis. The most common resolution as of the making of this video is 1080 aka Full HD. A screen with a resolution of 1080 has 1920 pixels horizontal and 1080 pixels vertical. Other common resolutions currently are 1440 which is 2560 pixels horizontal and 1440 pixels vertical and 4K which is 3840 pixels wide by 2160 pixels tall. Knowing the resolution you're going to be gaming at is important because the higher the resolution of your monitor, the more pixels you have on screen, which means more work for your GPU, which means in order to display a nice playable frame rate, your graphics card is going to need to have enough ponies under the hood to keep up. The next thing that's important to know is your monitor's refresh rate. The refresh rate is the frequency at which an image on your monitor screen is refreshed. When looking at a monitor specs, this is expressed in hertz. So a monitor that has a refresh rate of 60 hertz means that the on-screen image is refreshed 60 times every second. A monitor with a refresh rate of 120 hertz means the image is refreshed 120 times per second, and so on. The reason why knowing your monitor's refresh rate is important is because if your graphics card is sending more frames per second to your monitor than it can display, the extra money you spent on that graphics card isn't doing you a lot of good. Uh, for example, let's say your graphics card is sending 120 frames per second to your monitor, but your monitor is only capable of displaying 60 frames per second. That means, well, that essentially means half of the frames your graphics card is rendering are never being displayed. Yeah, this is oversimplifying things a bit, but I just want you to understand that having too many frames going to your monitor can actually be a bad thing. A very noticeable phenomenon that occurs when your graphics card is sending more frames to your monitor than it is capable of displaying is something known as screen tearing. Let me explain a little bit how it works. When a monitor displays a frame, it begins drawing the frame at the top of the screen and works its way down. When your graphics card is sending frames to your monitor more quickly than your monitor can display them, what can happen is Partway through, it begins drawing a different frame, which results in horizontal lines running through the screen where the image doesn't match up. Looks really nice, doesn't it? In really fast-paced games, the screen tearing can actually make the game unplayable. 
you can fix this problem in a couple of different ways. The expensive way is to just upgrade to a higher refresh rate monitor. The more common and far less expensive alternative is to just lock the frame rate in the game you're playing to match your monitor's refresh rate. Uh, or if your game doesn't have that particular option, uh, you can enable VSync, which essentially does the same thing. If you're having to do this for one or two games, it's not really a big deal if you ask me, but if you're having to do this on every game you play, then in my opinion, that's performance that is simply lost, which equals money spent that is being wasted and could have gone toward more or faster RAM, a better CPU, or a meat lover's pizza. Anyway, I think you can see what I'm getting at here. When you know the resolution and the refresh rate of your monitor, this can help you choose an appropriately powered graphics card and avoid spending more money than you need to. Another question I like to ask myself in conjunction with resolution and refresh rate is what settings do I want to run my games at? This question is usually a moot point because as gamers, do we ever want to run our games on the lowest possible settings? Of course not! We want to run everything at the highest possible quality settings we can. Well, that is of course, unless you're trying to get the highest frame rate possible. But for the sake of this video, let's assume we're looking to run our games on the highest quality settings possible at or above 60 FPS. The next important bit of information is what CPU are you going to be pairing your new graphics card with? The fact that you're watching this video tells me that you've been doing some research before purchasing your new graphics card. So I'm pretty confident that in your research, you've heard people talk about CPU bottlenecking. When running a game, the CPU and GPU work together to execute the application. The CPU has different things it has to handle like the in-game AI, uh, user input, game physics, and audio and stuff. And once it's done processing all that, we'll send a command to the GPU to render the graphics. The faster the CPU does its job, the more render commands the GPU receives and the higher the game frame rate goes. CPU bottlenecking happens when the CPU is delivering render commands slower than what the GPU is capable of outputting. This means that your GPU is sitting idle for fractions of a second at a time, waiting for render commands to come in, resulting in lower frame rates. The main thing you need to get out of this is you don't want to pair a super high-end graphics card with a low-end CPU. Historically and currently, at least as of the making of this video, CPUs in that price range will bottleneck those types of high-end GPUs. Again, historically and currently speaking, you're going to want a CPU that is at least in the $250 price range in order to maximize the performance of a high-end graphics card. If you have a lower end CPU, the graphics cards that are going to be the most optimal for you are going to be the sub $300 stuff. Again, this is speaking very generally from the way things are currently and have been historically. Uh, moving into the future, I can't say definitively if this trend is going to continue or not, as I cannot foresee all the changes in technology that will be coming. Uh, but for the short term foreseeable future, it appears this piece of advice will continue to hold true. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is your computer's power supply. Different GPUs require different amounts of power to operate. As a general rule of thumb, the more expensive a graphics card is, the more powerful it is which also means it needs more power to operate. You need to know what your power supply's output rating is. You then need to go to a website like Newegg.com and look up the graphics card you wanna buy and look at its specifications. Under the system requirements, it will tell you the minimum recommended power supply for that graphics card. If your power supply isn't rated at that output level, then you need to either choose a less powerful graphics card that will work with your PSU or upgrade your power supply along with your graphics card. There are of course other things to take into consideration when choosing a graphics card like 
How much VRAM does it have? Four gigabytes is the bare minimum I would recommend as of the making of this video with six gigabyte and eight gigabyte cards being optimal. When you're talking about VRAM, more is better. Uh, right now, eight gigabytes is more than enough for most games out there. However, with the way things have been going, I see games continuing to utilize more and more VRAM. Uh, other things that are important to consider when choosing a graphics card uh, is its size. If the thing is too big to fit in your case, well, that's kind of a problem. Uh, the aesthetics of the card, whether you want to go with an AMD or NVIDIA, or possibly Intel in the not-too-distant future. Uh, but most of those things I've addressed in another video of mine, uh, which you can check out uh, here if you'd like to. Um, just as a warning, that video is one of my first videos I ever made and is admittedly pretty cringy. Not that this one isn't, but the, the information in it is all still relevant, so there you go. Now that you've been armed with all this information, you're probably thinking to yourself, okay, what GPUs on the market today should I even be looking at? Well, I'm going to have to leave that to you. Thankfully, there are a lot of great tech channels and websites out there that have more resources than I do and test a lot of different graphics cards and review their performance. So I encourage you to take what you've learned here today and do your own research. There's a channel here on YouTube that I really, really like called Hardware Unboxed. Uh, they run more benchmarks than any other channel currently that I know of. And they're a great resource when you're wanting to find out just how well a graphics card performs in a wide variety of games. Um, I encourage you to check them out. Okay, so I feel I've rambled on plenty long enough, and if you've made it to this portion of the video, I thank you for hanging in until the end. I appreciate your desire to learn. Thanks so much for checking out this video. I hope it has been informative as well as helpful. Please hit the like button before you go. Leave a comment in the comments section. Uh, you know, doing those simple little things help me more than you know. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more content from me. And if you'd like to help me continue making more videos, please check out the link to my Amazon store in the video description where you can purchase cool products that I feature on my channel. Uh, all right, I'm going to shut up now. Uh, I hope to see you again soon in another video. Um, we'll catch you later. Okay, let's do this. Okay, give me some excitement, some pizzazz. Hello and welcome to Miraxo's Reviews and How-Tos! Okay, um, maybe back it off a little bit. Okay. Uh, hello, and welcome to Miraxo's Reviews and How-Tos. Uh, let's try increasing the energy a little and turn down the creepy about ten notches. Yeah. Okay, I got this. Come on, let's do this, man. Let's go, come on.